Hi, and welcome everyone to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Krosmer. Uh, we're here to take all of your kidney questions. And as always, you can reach us as plantbasedkidneyhealth at gmail.com. So today's topic is all about the ketogenic diet and kidney disease. What's the evidence? So Michelle, let's dive right into it. Can you explain to us a little bit about what is the ketogenic diet and really what is really um, the uses for it? Yeah. So the ketogenic diet has actually been around for a long time. Um, it was traditionally used to help treat children with epilepsy. And, um, the way it was used to do that was, you know, they found that these kids having seizures, the seizures subsided when they were in this fasting state. Um, and so the ketogenic diet, basically you can mimic that starvation or fasting state by having a very low carb, high fat diet. Um, and so that's basically what the ketogenic diet is. And so in order, basically, if we think of our preferred fuel source is carbohydrates. So if we deny the body um, of that, it has to start to metabolize fat and use that for an energy source and make ketone bodies. And so, um, you know, obviously today in the last probably, I don't know, years and years and years, it's been used for weight loss, for diabetes, and in all different disease states. But that's kind of the history of it in brief. But it is a low-carb, high-fat diet. And I think where a lot of um, confusion, misconception is around it is that a ketogenic diet traditionally is not a high-protein diet. It's still usually about 10 to 20% of calories coming from protein, but where sometimes people, as it's become more like popularized and, um, you know, people are using it more and more, sometimes they're not actually doing the ketogenic diet traditionally and they're having a lot higher protein intake. So, um, that's kind of, again, low carb, very low carb, high fat diet, and the body is metabolizing fat to use as an energy source since it is um, being denied the carbohydrates to use as an energy source. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so having said all that, obviously then, I mean, we want to make this relevant to kidney health. So what can you tell us about the evidence around, um, or if there is any around a ketogenic diet and how that relates to kidney health and are there any potential benefits and potential risks? Yeah. So let's focus on three big areas. So we're going to focus on protein, fat, and acid load. So as Michelle talked about, you know, when we talk about a ketogenic diet, the classic version had a ratio of about four to one or three to one when we looked at things like fat to carbohydrates going on. The issue was that the dropout rate in those studies was really, really high, meaning it was approaching closer to 50 plus percent. So what they came up with ways to be able to, especially in children, to be able to make it more tolerable. And that's where things like the modified Atkins diet came in. And the whole point in that was instead of going for very, very low proteins, you would actually get the protein content higher, still keeping carbs very low, but the protein would be about 25 to 35 percent. So why should you care when it comes to kidney disease? Because one of the things we talk about is as you go up on the protein, especially animal protein, what happens is, is there's all these impacts that occur on the kidneys and the kidneys start to decline faster. So that is something that's been shown in repeated studies. We have an entire video on that. You can check it out, but we've talked about that in length. Now, Moving away from the protein side, let's get into the fat side. So there's a study that was done in 2010. This was Lynn and colleagues, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. And what they showed was that as you get higher amounts of saturated fat, there was a direct link with higher saturated fat consumption and increased albuminuria. How much? There was a 33% higher increased risk of spilling protein in the urine going on. Then there was another study by Lynn et al. in C. Jason, and that was published in also in 2010. And what they were looking at was the lowest amount of animal protein to the highest amount of, I'm sorry, the lowest amount of animal fat to the highest amount of animal fat. And what they saw was that the risk of developing protein in the urine, which we call microalbuminuria, albumin is one type of protein, that was 72% higher. And for people who were getting two or more servings of red meat per week, they had a 51% higher risk of spilling albumin or protein in the urine going on. Not just that, when we talk about a ketogenic diet, and this is also the same thing that's going to apply to a plant-based diet is the sodium content in these diets is very, very high. 
And so you have to be very, very careful, especially if you're relying on a lot of animal meats and high fat foods. If they have a lot of salt in them, salt in itself is directly linked to increasing the risk of albuminuria or protein in the urine. How much? In that study in 2010, highest sodium intake was linked to a 52% higher risk going on. So now we've talked about protein. We've talked about fat. Let's talk about acid load as the third component of a ketogenic diet that we're concerned about. So there's been a lot of study in uh, the journal Nutrients in 2021. There was a study that talked about what goes on in terms of just animal fat. And they showed exactly the same thing as previous studies, which was you increase animal fat, you get more protein in the urine. But what we know about acid, and acid comes from a diet that's predominantly animal-based, what we know about acid is metabolic acidosis is directly linked to worsening of kidney function. And what's the mechanism behind that? It's essentially that you start to get a lot more ammonia production going on. And as you get this ammonia production going on, it leads to scarring inside the kidneys. We call that tubulo interstitial fibrosis. It's just a fancy word of saying you just scar up the kidney and you do that because there's more aldosterone production, and then there's more endothelin-1 production going on. And if you remember aldosterone, what aldosterone job is, is to hold on to salt, get rid of potassium. And it's doing the opposite effect of what we really want it to do. So the more aldosterone and the more endothelin-1, you have vasoconstriction or narrowing going on. And as a result, you're getting all of this fibrosis going on. Now, other stuff to know as we start to talk about this stuff is this for studies that have been looking at metabolic acidosis going on. So Arsiad and colleagues, they have a study published in 2020. This is in the Journal of Nutrition and Metabolism. And what they showed was that in both animal models and in human, in animal models, long-term ketogenic diets lead to chronic metabolic acidosis. How do we treat metabolic acidosis? Oftentimes we give people sodium bicarbonate. But remember, we just said sodium is bad for you. So now we're giving you a treatment that has a component that's going to make part of the situation even worse. So it's important to watch out for the metabolic acidosis. The other thing that's important is long-term ketogenic diets also lead to anemia, which is low blood counts and chronic kidney disease, and they'll lead to reduced levels of antioxidants going on in your blood. Now, Let's flip all of that around. So those are all the negatives. Remember, three categories on the negatives, protein, fat, and the acid load is what we talked about. On the flip side is, is what some of the proponents argue is with a ketogenic diet, there's substantial weight loss going on. And when there's weight loss, the A1C gets better, blood pressure gets better. And all of those, remember, are surrogates or the main risk factors for kidney disease, blood pressure, diabetes, and weight. And they do get better. The problem is, is what happens on a ketogenic diet is you make all of your cells resistant to insulin. So what we have shown in studies, there was a study published in Cell that showed that whenever you go off the ketogenic diet, as soon as a week after doing it, the second you introduce carbs back in, you actually start to break the cells that line your blood vessels because that sugar the body doesn't know what to do with it. And you already build substantial insulin resistance. So even though you can lose weight, and the one study that people cite was one that they called a very low calorie ketogenic diet. And what they showed in that one was in three months, people were getting 20% weight loss. So if you're like, oh my God, I got to jump on this ketogenic diet. Here's the caveat the calorie count that those people were eating was 450 to 800 calories a day. So it's essentially close to starvation. So before you jump into it, what another study showed was when they compared a very low calorie ketogenic diet to just a very low calorie standard diet, there was actually no difference. So even though the positives are you may lose weight, in my humble opinion, I think there are safer ways to lose weight. Yeah. And that's a really good outline of potential benefits as well as the risks. And what I've um, experienced from, you know, a nutrition and dietitian standpoint, and what's I think important for everyone to remember in the kidney community is that majority of people with kidney disease don't know 
they have kidney disease or have underlying kidney problems. And so if you're following, you know, a type of diet that and potentially consuming a more acid forming diet, higher protein diet, all these other things without even knowing, you know, that you have underlying kidney problems. Um, I've had people come to me and like, that's kind of when they found out they had kidney problems was after a year um, of kind of on and off following a ketogenic diet and then not, and then ketogenic and kind of the weight's gone up and down and they've had high protein and they've, you know, it's all these things that have been going on. And so I think that's important to remember too, is oftentimes people don't realize they have kidney disease or kidney concerns, and you might be, um, making some of these dietary changes that are impacting the kidneys. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So Michelle, let's say that you know, we have somebody who's going to follow a ketogenic diet, no matter what we end up saying to them. How can they follow more of a plant predominant? And really, is there ways, even when following a whole food plant-based lifestyle or predominant lifestyle, to really be able to lower your carbs? Yeah, so it's definitely tricky. Um, you, there's definitely ways to do a more plant-focused um lower carb or keto type of diet. Um, I think going extremely low carbohydrates difficult in order to get the amount of fiber that we want people consuming and these whole plant foods. But I think the big distinction there is the type of fat. So ideally getting more of those plant unsaturated fatty acids and compared to the saturated fats coming from the animal products. Um, and you know, that might be in the form of something like olive oil or avocados or certain nuts and seeds. But again, we have to remember with kidney disease is that we, for a lot of these people, we're still taking into account potassium. And so that's where it can get tricky is if we're restricted on potassium and then we're trying to do more of these plant fats, which then are not saturated fat, which is better, but they also might be higher in potassium. So that's where it gets tricky. Um, it's definitely possible. It's it's possible to keep the net carbohydrates lower. So have, you know, higher um, fiber, lower net carb. Um, but so it, it's possible, it's doable. It's kind of finding, I would definitely say you want to work with the dietitian to do that. And I know we're going to dive into a specific type of kidney disease where there is some research, um, you know, on the lower carb or keto type of diet in polycystic kidney disease. And I think that that's where it's um, used more prevalently amongst renal dietitians and helping their clients. And so that's something more specialized and where it should definitely be guided by a renal dietitian to do that. So I guess that leads me then into my question for you. Can you explain that the, the research of evidence that there is on a keto diet or keto type of diet for polycystic kidney disease? Yeah, great. So, you know, polycystic kidney disease, and we're, we're going to end up doing a whole episode talking about PCKD because we've gotten so many requests around that. But real briefly, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, which is the predominant type more so than the autosomal recessive type, but it's basically... There's these two genes, PKD1 and PKD2, and you can have a mutation in either one. And what ends up happening is, is your, your kidneys is like one really, really tiny, like, I don't know, not a basketball, but smaller than about nine to 10 centimeters. And you start to get these balloons forming, these cysts forming. And these cysts are actually filled with fluid and they get bigger and bigger. And people can get kidneys so large that literally they are the size of small basketball. They're very, very uncomfortable. And the question has always been is what can help to slow down the growth? So there is a medication that's available, Trovaptin. And the mechanism behind Trovaptin is, is that it makes you basically pee like crazy. I mean, we're talking liters. And so you have to keep drinking and you have to keep the flow going. And so if you think about that mechanism and you say, could you replicate it? The answer is yes. Now, where does a ketogenic diet fall into this? Well, interestingly enough, there's a, a, some very interesting studies that have come out. And what those studies have basically shown in animal models is that if you basically create ketone bodies inside these mice, how do you do that? You put them on a ketogenic diet and they create them. You can see the cyst not only staying the same, they start to get smaller. So ketone bodies can actually regress them. Now, here's the question. Do you have to follow a ketogenic diet? Well, the same study, they then decided just to give them the ketone bodies themselves, beta-hydroxybutyrate, instead of putting them on a ketogenic diet. And guess what? The effects were the same. So 
turns out that beta-hydroxybutyrate may be a mechanism. But then there was a third mechanism they did, and that was fasting. Simply by doing a form of fasting, which we'll get into in another episode called time-restricted feeding, where you basically, you know, the standard is 8 and 16, and we'll talk about that. But by restricting how many hours they were eating, by doing that and making a greater amount of time fasting, that fasting generated ketone bodies and it showed cyst reduction. So it turns out in polycystic kidney disease, the way to improve the disease may not work for everybody, but there is some hope. One is you got to drink a lot of water. Two is you can use fasting. And three is reduce your overall calorie count. And all of those things together can actually make a difference going on. So interesting. And again, just a reminder too, how there's there's so many different causes of kidney disease and there can definitely be more specific dietary um, recommendations or treatment methods from both a medical and nutrition standpoint based on what is potentially causing the kidney disease and the kidney damage. So um, I think that's a really good explanation. I think overall, um, you know, we just want people to be mindful and wary with keto and um and especially too, one thing to mention is as all, and I think plant-based has become this too, where it's like now it's more popular. So now we see more processed packaged food with labels of plant-based. Um, I mean, my local Sprouts has keto like tabs on the aisle of different food things. And just because something's labeled keto or even labeled vegan or plant-based or anything or paleo, it doesn't mean that that highly processed food is now healthy just because it has that label and it's, you know, in the keto sense, it's low carb, high fat. Um, we still want overall, we want this whole minimally processed plant predominant plant-based, um, you know, diet for helping people with kidney disease. And then amongst that, there's ways to individualize and customize it more for people. But, you know, at least hopefully with this, we can kind of touch the the surface of potential benefits, potential risks, where a keto um, type of diet, you know, maybe there's a little more research um, and there's some less, but we hope that this answers some of your guys' questions around that. Yeah, I think that sort of wraps up this episode. So guys, thank you so much for checking us out. As always, you can leave us a message. And uh, if you're on the podcast, please go ahead and write a review. It really helps us out. We would be very grateful. And if you haven't shared this with your friends, please do so. Yeah. Thanks guys. And we'll see you next week. Thanks everyone.